let's say you go to the supermarket and you want to choose between uh, two boxes of cereal. How do you decide which one uh, to buy? What the brain really does, because, because you can say, oh, you analyze uh, the price or you analyze things as much as you want, but that's not how it happens. What it happens is that the brain breaks down information on that cereal into, into you know, unconsciously many components. First of all, for example, the taste. There is also the price. There is uh, maybe the picture, you know, the, the attractiveness of the product. The health consequences, you know, does it, does it cause fatness or whatever. So your brain automatically uh, attaching this information and translating it into uh, some, some emotional signal. The competition happens in a way what we call a natural selection. That is, the stronger gains advantage over the weaker one. For example, uh, you can have uh, many uh, positive emotions regarding taste, health consequences, and so on, but the price is very high, very negative. A strong response like that will dominate everything else. We do have examples of patients who, who exactly will have that problem taking so long uh, choosing between uh, two types of cereals or two types of anything that they are sh trying to buy in the supermarket. They have a hard time deciding if you give them a choice, will you want to come back to the hospital uh, the next week or the week after. They would take forever uh, to decide. And what they do, it's because they analyze, they start taking each piece of information one at a time and compare it to the other. And, and, and then they forget what they, what they did five steps earlier. Because the brain cannot, cannot uh, uh, hold online so, many, so much information at a time. So they keep wavering back and forth, and, and, and they are deprived of, of this positive, negative signaling that, that really uh, switched them one way or the other.